guys, Jonah here. It is me. You looking and you style and summertime's out there somewhere. I might even tell you, I might do a, a not a beer review, but a video on, on why I got rid of the beer. But it's gone. It has gone. Um, might return, but it's gone. But it's, um, yeah, it's bank holiday. I've had a few beers um, out and about over the bank holiday. Um, I thought I'd do a beer review because I haven't done one for a while. So I apologise, dear viewer, but I'm going to do another one, another single hot beer from my Beer 52 box. And this one is very strange because it's from here, Manchester, um, oh, up here, from Alphabet Brewing. And it's using German hops, Hallertau Mitfruer. Um, but it's from Manchester, which is weird in itself, but also, um, they've, <laughs> they've called it a Kolsch. Um, anyway, let's see if it'll focus on that bad boy. Alphabet, Alphabet Brewing. There we go. Um, just to wet the whistle, it is a 4.6% Kolsch. Um, Das ist sehr gut. Um, German hops. I mean, they are basically lording up the German hops, which is uh, which is cool. Um, and if it will, it will zoom in. Yeah, there we go. So it says this is our alphabet take on a classic German style Kolsch. So I'm glad they said German style. Uh, it's a German ale fermented at a colder temperature than the classic British ale. Utilising uh, the best 2023 Hallertau Mitfru we can get our hands on for a spicy noble zing that can't be beaten. Uh, this is a crisp drinker. Um, we'll go down easy on a sunny day, and it was sunny today. The wind in your hair, well, not much hair left, I'm afraid, and the tunes are blasting. Brost, but apparently it contains barley, wheat, oats, and yeast. And obviously water and the hops. <laughs> yeah. So, number one, a traditional Kolsch should be brewed in Cologne. Um, and this isn't or hasn't been because it's in Manchester. But they said a Kolsch style. So that's fair enough, I guess. It's a single hop beer, um, apparently because, obviously, um, Halatau Mitfru. Um, but... Another thing is it's got oats and wheat in it. Uh, that's not really on style for a Kolsch either. So basically it's a single hop beer that's not really a Kolsch, but it is a single hop beer. So we're going to drink it. Um, shame on. If you're new to the channel, this I've always looked like this, dear viewer. Um, but some people would tell you that... Uh, yeah, I used to have a whacking great beard, which I did, of course. Um, I've only got a little bit, a little bit left, but you never know, it might grow back. Who knows? So, because of all the wheat and oats and all that stuff, is it going to be a cloudy beer? Of course it is. Not hugely cloudy, um, but reasonably cloudy. Uh, what should we call that? Half a finger's head? which is probably going to disappear reasonably soon. Uh, let's do a photo. There we go. Alphabet. Bring that one back a bit. Turn it side a bit. And then a cheesy grin. And that's how we roll. If you like this review, there are loads of others. I've got, I've got a thousand, I think, on my, uh, on my channel now. Or over a thousand anyway. If you can be bothered looking back in my back catalogue, there's some real chestnuts in there. Um, <laughs> why not think about subscribing, click the bell, flick your bean, all that kind of jazz. Um, why don't you leave me a comment as well? That would be good. And click like. That would be a good one. Yeah, so very cloudy. Normal colches are super, super clear because... Um, unlike what it says here, yeah, it's just a normal ale yeast and it's brewed at colder temperatures. That's not strictly true. Um, 
for a, for a proper Kolsch, you brew at normal temperatures, so warm warm temperatures, but then, and you're using an ale yeast, not a lager yeast, but then uh, you bring it very cold, uh, and basically you lager it for up to six months um, for a long period of time. I think what these guys have done is they've used an ale yeast and just fermented it over a short period of time at a colder temperature. Um, not sure that's a Kolsch either. Uh, not even sure that would work very well, to be honest. Um, but alas, let's see what we get. Lovely colour. Um, cloudy beer because of the wheat and the oats. Not strictly a Kolsch style, to be honest. And Kolsch, if you go to Cologne, uh, Fru is the main one. Uh, I've had that a few times. It's a lot darker. It's a lot clearer, put it that way. But it's darker as well. Uh, it's not kind of light or extra light, straw-coloured, yellowy type of beer. It's a bit more dark. Hmm, interesting. Halatau uh, Mitfru. We're definitely getting a kind of lemony, zesty kind of thing on the nose. Well, I am. <laughs> a little bit of spice too. And I wonder what yeast, they haven't actually said what yeast they've used in this bad boy. Um, not sure if Alphabet has a house style yeast or not, um, but you can get special um, Kolsch yeasts. Um, there's another style that's very similar and I much prefer it called Altbier. Um, I used to go when I was in Germany for holidays and stuff, Altbier bitter. I give me an Altbier please. Hmm. Yeah, a little bit lemony, that kind of thing. Cheers and beers. Let's see what we get. Whoa. Nice, clean, a little bit creamy. This is not, yeah, this is not a normal Kolsch style because it shouldn't be uh, hazy, but that haziness is kind of giving something extra um, for the hops as well. I always think you can get away with a little bit more when you're doing a hazy beer that you don't get away with if you're doing a superior, a superior clear beer, um, you know, a bright clear beer. That's what lagering helps to do as well. It drops literally everything out because... Um, yeah, you're leaving it for such a long time. Unfortunately, craft beer people um, don't often have the time. Um, they don't often respect the old traditions. Uh, hence, they chuck things like wheat and oats in there, make it cloudy, and then say, hey, it was supposed to be cloudy, which it is if you're including those ingredients. But it's not really a Kolsch beer. Um, tastes quite nice, though. Yeah, there's a little bit of spiciness in there, tiny bit of green kind of in there too. And then you've got the kind of sort of lemon and limey type thing, which you often get from Halatau. Um, I've used it before and I've done some home brewing and stuff. It is a really nice hop, actually. Um, usually done in lagers and that kind of stuff. It's a noble hop, put it that way. Um, as a single hop, yeah, I think it works quite well. In that kind of style, like a light um, pale ale, which I guess this is going to be a pale ale um, of some description, um, but also in lagers and cultures, for example, things like that. Um, yeah, as a beer, this is this is not bad at all. As a single hot beer, yeah, really nice. It tells you what Halatau is all about. Um, perhaps the wheat notes are kind of molding things a little bit together that maybe you wouldn't get from just using um, extra pale or something like that. <clears throat> Pardon me, quite well carbonated too. We have got some lovely, lovely lines on there. On the foam, foam watch, which is always good. Um, 
there is nothing wrong with this beer at all. There's some other writing there, but it's underneath. I can't quite see what it is. Oh, there we go. I can show you that. Ding, ding, ding. Drink fresh, chin chin. This is a vegan beer. Another reason why it might be a bit cloudy. Um, and hopefully, I'm pretty sure. Uh, alphabet Brewing, blah, 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 blah. Does it say it was 100% brewed in Manchester? I'm always a bit sort of, I don't know, since that debacle that was the uh, the London beer box, um, yeah, I'm always checking to see where beers are made because a lot of people, um, and some people are contract brewers anyway, which is absolutely fine, uh, but some people brew out of big macro breweries um, and they, I always find they they lose something. And Beer 52 themselves are supposed to be um, celebrating or looking after the little guy, shall we say, uh, not propping up the macros, if that makes sense. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just talking nonsense. But anyway, let's try some more of this beer. I'm wondering if that spiciness might be coming from the yeast used. Look, there's a sort of weird Loch Ness monster type thing sticking its head up on on a. Oh, look, there's a smiley face as well in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, and there, it's like some sort of mad dinosaur thing, like a T-Rex, a weird sort of thing attacking a weird sort of small man or a small animal or something like that and there we go back to the tide lines phone watch is so much fun when you get really drunk i suggest you have a look at your phone and see what you can get um so that is a pretty good beer i'm liking it but it is definitely nothing like what a colch should be um but a single hot beer from alphabet Really, really nice. Oh, I'm going to belch again, I think. Oh, pardon me. And you do get that from lagers. Anyhow, there are things in the offing I'm not going to tell you about today, but it's going to involve a bit more beer judging. Fingers crossed. So, for those of you that saw my, uh, my sort of beer judging from the past, um... Yeah, it was a while ago, I have to say. Um, but I'm definitely going to get some more beer judging in before the end of the year, which is really good. But uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to come off yet. So uh, hopefully I'll have some updates for you. Anyhow, this has been your loving Uncle Jonah at the end of Bank Holiday Monday, the late or the spring bank holiday, I should say. We're almost into summer. We've made it out of spring. Thank God, I don't know if it was like you, but it's only just heated up, uh, heated up, yeah, in the last few days. So, uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be more of that in the uh, in the offing. And that's another reason why I took the beard off a little bit, because it was getting really hot and sweaty under that bad boy. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And Uncle Jonah will return with another beer review real soon.